I suppose you've all seen this wonderful, wonderful thing that Karen brought in tonight. And so we've, we've waited for quite a while for her to get, the, get this all together. And she did a magnificent job. I hope you'll come up afterwards and look at the things that she's brought in. And so it, it's always nice to have one of our own members, a board member, et cetera, to come and do the program. So I'd like to introduce Karen Sitton Saxberg for those of you. Well, since she already introduced me, I don't have to introduce myself. <clears throat> and I'll warn you, I'm, this is a, a very emotional thing for me, so if I lose it, bear with me. Um, I'm the great-granddaughter of Roma Sitton, excuse me, and this is her life. <clears throat> she was born on September 9th, 1896, to John and Ida Kurt Kars in McMinnville. Her mother was a descendant of the Hembry family. <clears throat> Her family originally came from Switzerland by boat, but they never really stopped to spend much time on the East Coast. Once they had heard about the Oregon Trail, they headed west, settling in Yamhill County. With a lot of other pioneer families, Sittens included, she never really knew why they came here, but she was always glad she did. Go ahead. <clears throat> That's goes even more. <laughs> her parents worked for a while for the Sitton family, which is where she met her few future husband, Charles Sitton. <laughs> Childhood was very simple, and she spent a lot of her time with her favorite thing, her pony and I could not find a picture of her pony. <clears throat> she rode it to the number six school and finished through the eighth grade. Number six school was a log cabin which also included a church and a Sunday school. The school was built by the Yamhill River by her uncle, her grandmother's uncle, Andrew Hembry. She finished through the eighth grade, but then she went to Carleton High School and then eventually for a little while in McMinnville. She mostly studied music, which I did not know. She spent most of her entire life in McMinnville, except, <clears throat> as she told me, her father was transferred outside of, outside of Eugene for a while. She traveled there behind the family wagon <clears throat> on her pony with a cow and a goat in tow. She said it took her over a week, almost two, to get there. But she didn't like it there. So she decided to come back on her pony by herself. And she moved in with her great-grandmother, Nancy Jane Hembry, staying there until, she was, until her marriage to Charles. Charles Sitton and her were married on December 5th, 1917 four to five years after he graduated from Oregon Agricultural School, which is now OSU. They lived with Charles's mother until 1920, a year after my dad was born, uh, March 1919. <clears throat> mm -hmm. They moved to the two-story White House. They bought from her relative, John Scott. The house had no windows, only some doors, and had squirrels living in the walls. <laughs> but she called it home. Having three more children, 
<clears throat> Nada, born in 1921, John, born in 1923. <clears throat> and then Charles Jr. was born in 1929. <clears throat> She continued to live there until her death in 1996 at the age of 100 years. <coughs> Excuse me. Family was very important to her, and so was the farm. She raised over 200 chickens selling eggs in downtown McMinnville for what she would call her seed money. <laughs> Using her money on the basics, groceries and clothing, but as she said, never tobacco. <clears throat> Hunting was also important to the family, which made it important to her. She told me about going to Eastern Oregon at Gus's cabin <clears throat> to cook, as she said. And so she took, since she had to cook, she took her first wood cook stove there, and it is still there. But she didn't just go there to cook, she went there to hunt getting her first deer. The family still hunts at Gus's cabin to this day, which is over 100 years. It's in eastern Oregon, and Gus was a pioneer who came on the Oregon Trail with my family and stayed there. That's my grandfather and his dogs. We had hunting dogs. Um, about 14 um, hounds, three beagles, and a border collie. <laughs> That's my grandfather and my grandma. That's me. <laughs> the only baby picture I have. <laughs> That's my Uncle John, Roger, and my grandpa at Christmas. Grandma would say, I'm a pioneer family, and I have pioneer blood, <clears throat> excuse me, blood running through my veins. So no wonder I love history. Her community involved it consists of helping with the March of Dimes during World War II helping after Charles Jr. had a bat with polio. She organized the first county campaign, bringing in $14,055.04. Stay right there. She also worked for the White Cloud Extension Unit, served as Yamhill County Farm Bureau's women chairman for 15 years. This is the White Cloud Unit she worked with. She's a third from this side with a white, with a brown vest or the black vest pardon um, it's I think it's Lafayette school <clears throat> because that's where they met years ago oh at the building itself Oh, okay. <clears throat> she became a member of the museum in and, and started volunteering in 1969 when the society established and purchased the polling church, helping with the museum's collections and donations of more than 740 years. With this, she helped cataloging labeling and recording, becoming the only museum director, quote unquote, until at least 1979. She spent hours recruiting for lawn mowing, house cleaning, window washing, when the sun would come through the stained glass, she'd say. Preserving that heritage is, sorry, is serious business for her and the 200 members of the society, she always said, 
She never viewed herself as doing much. She always said, I'm the one who benefits. <sighs> Sorry. She said, I just can't stand around and do nothing. Some of the 5,000 items received for many donors were once her own. You can go ahead. There's the ice cream freezer, Joanne. <laughs> it's my grandfather standing on it, sitting on it. <laughs> go ahead. We'll go through some of the hunting pictures, and then I'll talk a little more. This is the same cabin they still use today. That was his original cabin. Way out, and I can't tell you exactly where it's at because it's way out in the middle of nowhere. It's um, um, it's north of Baker. I can't pronounce it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's my grandfather in the very end. And this is, I don't know if any of you people knew Ernie Moe. That's him on this end, right here. In fact, they just got back from there not about two weeks ago. They have uh, military tents that came through the Korean War. There's Gus and my grandma and my grandpa. She's wearing britches. She's wearing britches. You didn't see her do that very often. <laughs> anyway, some of the items were her want. She said she always felt like coming home each time she walked into the museum. She's as proud as a new bride when visitors came to admire. Everything is so clean. She said she would hear them say, the museum is like grandma's attic. She would say, due to all the volunteers, she started the first traveling museum for some time going to area schools. She would gather things from her museum, crocks, butter molds, iron pots, and the like, and put them into her car and off she would go. <clears throat> it was very time consuming, so she felt that they would learn more if they came to the museum. She also helped compile two books, Schools of Old Yam Hill and Historic Houses of Old Yam Hill. She retired from the museum after Failing eyesight could no longer allow her to drive her 1964 Ford four-door fair lane <laughs> white. She did, however, help to occasionally finally retiring in September in 1988. She knew more about the Sitton family history and dates than anyone. She could tell you about the inhabitants of the county the Yam Hills Indian tribe. She would say only a few people are descendants from this, from this particular tribe, but the Sittens are some. They adopted the name when they worked for the family. They actually came and cooked for my family and took the Sitten name and still have it to this day. Growing up with grandma was like always about family, history, and traditions. Memorial Day, which you never missed, decorations and picnics. The family picnic, third Sunday in July, Sitton, Fendel, and Mendenhall, and Blackberry Cobbler. Thanksgiving, a house full of people, a 28 plus pound turkey, 35 at one point in time, which she could barely get out of her, her oven. She would cook Christmas and her tree, which was always had oranges, nuts, and chocolate drops. In 1991, she wanted me to cut her hair, but I just couldn't do it. She had never, ever, 
ever cut her hair before. I put her off for a year, but I finally said, okay, and in April of 92, I cut her hair. Very short, but that's what she wanted, and that was the hardest thing I ever had to do in my life. <laughs> it was um, as long as the first, when you saw it with the really long hair, yes, it was. And when I first cut it, it was curly, and then it went straight. <laughs> the many hours I spent with her was always a lesson in family, history, and life, which she loved. Grandma would say, where the home is, the heart is. We lost her in October 96, but for some, she is everywhere we are, especially here at the museum. I feel that she is here and would love the fact that I belong and am involved. My oldest was once the youngest member of the museum at two years of age. She would be so proud of what has happened with the museum, and I know she's watching with a sparkle in her eye. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. That was a lovely program honoring your grandmother, Roma Sitton. Uh, is, are there more photos to show? Oh, I'm sorry. Did you want to come back up and talk about them? Give you a break. Okay. There she is. <laughs> this was when she was waiting to go to um, Portland. She um, got to be on TV, and she was so excited. She, she just couldn't stand it. But they picked her to be on AM Northwest. Um, and that's her limo ride. <clears throat> she was in this carriage, and they at, told her to ride in the back. She didn't want to ride in the front. She told the guy to get over to the side she was driving. Because <laughs> she said she always wanted to drive a, a carriage, and so she loved horses, and that was... But, and they did kind of let her drive. <clears throat> this is when she was on AM Northwest. She loved being on TV. <clears throat> she was also Grand Marshal for the parade in 1993. This is in front of her house, which is a century farm. <clears throat> she got to, to ride in that, but she, when they actually put her in the parade, she did have the top down. And she wanted to ride on the back, and they wouldn't let her. That's her 99th birthday. And her house. Is that where you live now? No, I live next door. Okay. Who lives there? My cousin. My youngest cousin. Yes, well, that's why I picked that picture, because that's how most everybody remembered it. And they never remembered her with short hair. <laughs> she hated her short hair, but... <laughs> yes. But it was hard for her to take care of. That's the reason why she made me cut it. And did you keep it cut, or did she try to let No, she kept it cut. But this was my, one of my favorite pictures of her. That's it. Thank you. Thanks, Tammy.